her. Oh, I see. All right. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, my name is my name is Kathleen Richardson. I am the dean of the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Drake University, and my partner in crime is. Literally, I'm partner in crime. This is David Wright. I'm the associate dean of the School of Journalism, and they trust us so much. We're in different rooms, so we don't talk over each other. We're, we're going to do that a lot tonight, so get used to it. Okay. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a brief introduction to who we are, what we do here, um, who, what, who our students are, who our faculties are, faculty are, what you would learn if you, uh, if you come here. And, but we uh, especially want to leave plenty of time for any kind of questions that you might have. Um, and I was going to say, since we now actually can be heard and seen, and I especially buffed the top of my head for tonight to make sure that I was looking good for this, at any time you can type in a question, and we also have Allie Harms along from the admissions office. She will be writing down those questions, so if we don't happen to see what you put, um, then she'll keep the questions in line and we will answer those at the end of the evening just to make sure that everybody gets their questions answered. So first off, let me let me let me start with the stats a little bit, if I can. Uh, one of the most common questions we get is how many majors and minors are in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. We have about 420 majors and minors, um, and out of that group, about half our students get a second major or degree in a field outside of journalism. And for those of you who've come to campus, you've probably heard me say this is a huge marketing advantage. Because when you go out into the workforce, if you have two degrees, if you have two areas that complement, um, employers really like that. They find that very attractive. Some of the most common um, graphic design in magazines, graphic design in advertising are a great combination. We also see marketing with advertising or public relations. Uh, many times our uh, more digital media people will get involved in theater production on the production side, doing lighting and sound and all those elements. Politics has been extremely popular with our news people and also our public relations students. So having that ability to get two diplomas, two degrees in four years is really a great opportunity for you. And if you start your first year exploring that, maybe not proclaiming to, but your first year exploring that, we can help work with you on that during orientation this summer so that you can get some sense of what's going on with that. But we think that that's a huge advantage for you. We also have the highest internship rate at Drake. We're at 97% last year. Many, many of our students do multiple internships. Uh, quite a few people from outside the Des Moines, Des Moines area will do their first one at Drake, and then their second or third one at home when they're home during the summer. Um, we think this fleshes out what you do in the classes. It gets you connections in the industry. It builds your portfolio and your resume. So we are really, an advocate for internships because it puts into practice what you do in the classroom. And because all of our students have so many uh, internships, um, we're also very proud of the fact that our accomplishment rate of uh, students who are either in professional jobs or in graduate school within six months of graduation, last year it was 100%. And I would just add to this a couple of stories. First off, Nina Totenberg from NPR was here right before spring break yeah, speaking at the Buxbaum lecture. And she was kind of moaning and groaning, will journalism have a backup plan? And uh, President Maxwell came running over to me and said, what was our accomplishment rate? I said 100%. So he went up and said that. This is not a fluke, folks. Um, we had 100% last year. The year before, we had 99%. And in 2012, we had 100%. We are the highest accomplishment rate at Drake. So those of you who have parents who are saying, oh, journalism's dead, why would you go into that? There's nothing to do. Nothing could be further from the truth. And as we start talking about the curriculum in a few minutes, what you're going to see is we keep adapting our curriculum to the changes in the industry. We have not sat idle and said, oh, we're not going to change what we're doing. Everything's good. Certainly, journalism and mass communications are changing, but we're adapting at Drake, and we're all adjusting. And this is the reason our students are so successful. I would say another strong reason is you're going to be in classrooms with faculty, hands-on, from day one. If you come here next fall, you're going to have to put up with me for one class. And we're going to talk about the past, present, and future of journalism. And then we're also going to have a multimedia lab where you immerse yourself in that. So we're very proud of that number. That's the highest number at Drake. The university averages something like 98.7 accomplishment rate. 
but nobody's higher than the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Yay! Yay! This is another thing that we're very, very proud of. We have the highest study abroad rate of any area on campus. Uh, we're at 26%, and um, we really intend to increase that over the next few years. So as a student coming into Drake, it's something that we really encourage you look at. Um, because we now have a January term at Drake, I think we're in our third or fourth year of the January term, where it's a three-week term um, between fall and spring semester. We consistently have had opportunities through the School of Journalism for students to go abroad. We also have a lot of single semester opportunities. We have a full exchange with University of Nebrija in Madrid, Spain. Uh, we just signed a letter of agreement with the University in Chile, and we've had the dean and the associate dean come here, and we've had faculty and students go down to Chile. So we're really hoping to strengthen that. Many, many of our students speak Spanish, and we think that this is a great opportunity for them to go abroad and use that. But this is obviously not Spain. We have a student in Italy this semester, and uh, Kathleen took a picture off her blog and put it up here. The opportunities are wide, and they cover everything. As an example, I had an advisee who was in Scotland last semester for the independence vote and worked for the legislature in Scotland for a semester and had an incredible experience. So we believe strongly uh, in international study, and nobody does more than we do at Drake in terms of getting students to go abroad. Okay, you want me to start with the majors? Um, sure, why don't you go ahead. Okay, well, if you've, if you've been visiting uh, the School of Journalism at Drake over the last three years, you've seen a lot of changes in our majors. Uh, we constantly are adjusting our curriculum to make it more current. Uh, as an example, for a while, we had two advertising majors. We had creative and management. What we found was the industry wanted uh, graduates in that area to have both those skills, being creative and on the management side. So we now have a single advertising major, completely revamped curriculum last year that just now is going into place. Uh, one of the biggest changes we've had is we've had a radio TV major. Uh, the truth is, that's an antiquated description of where the industry is going. Much more of what students are doing now are digital photos, digital video, digital audio. And they're doing it for multiple platforms. You're doing it for broadcast. You're doing it for web. You're doing it for streaming. You're doing it for print. Um, you're doing it for radio. You're doing it for audio podcasts. So what we are creating is a brand new digital media production major that puts together the best elements of what we have before, but really pushes the students in different directions. You can see an example of that on the web, our first um, test case on the converged capstone using digital media production, magazine, and news is at urban-planes.com. Uh, they just started up this semester. They've got video, they've got audio, they've got text, they've got photos. It's a beautiful website. It's urban-planes.com. Um, and so that opportunity is out there with the digital media production major. And I think the other thing I'd say about this is part of the reason we changed this is so many of our majors were going to work for non-radio and television stations. They were going to work for Meredith Corporation doing multimedia. They were going to work for the Chicago Bears doing multimedia for the scoreboards. Um, it was all over the place. So we've really designed this new major to really take the impact of the Internet and multiple platforms. In the same way, magazines, which has been a flagship major for our school for many, many years, we've had the best magazine program in the country and the pacemakers and the journalism awards we've received for this. We've now changed that to magazine media because more and more magazines are coming out in electronic form. Uh, I get Wired Magazine and the tablet version of that is wonderful. National Geographic is available on tablets. So while there are still print magazines, we want our majors looking to the future in terms of how magazines are changing. So we try to be leading the edge on that. We also did this with our news majors. We had a broadcast news major and a news internet major. Well, very honestly, the skills need to overlap now. Newspaper people have to know video, have to know stills, have to know audio, have to know how to pull those elements together. So the news major combines the best of broadcast news and news internet because the students need both. So as an example in the news major, um, we did a test case this last year where we brought news internet students into a video production course doing high level HD video editing, doing news packages like, just like the TV stations do. And we had the um, 
we had the um, editor of the Times Delphic, the student newspaper in there, and she was scared to death at first. She's like, I don't know anything about this. And I made a prediction. I said, listen, by the end of the semester, this will be another tool in your toolbox of things you can use. And she was in the top three students of the class by the end of the semester. And she loved it. She got it. She adapted to it. So the news major now brings the best elements of news together for that. Public relations now has two opportunities. We have the traditional public relations major, which we've had for years. And we've just started a strategic political communication, which combines the best of PR with politics, which was a natural marriage. We're in Des Moines, Iowa. We're in the center of the world. Ted Cruz has been here so many times already. So we went to Virginia to announce, OK, well, it's cold and rainy here. Maybe that's why he went to Virginia. But this is the center of the presidential politics. So strategic political communication was a natural extension of what we were doing between PR and politics here at Drake. So you've got a couple different opportunities there. PR is kind of the cornucopia major. There's so many different opportunities from small firms like Big Brothers, Big Sisters, all the way up to principal financial group here in Des Moines that you could potentially go and intern with and then eventually get jobs. So that's now our majors lineup. Uh, it's changed quite a bit over the last three years, but I'm really excited about the way these things are coming together. And the students here at Drake, it's funny because a lot of the seniors are saying to us, man, I want to go back and do strategic political communication. It's like, no, no, no. Your parents want you to graduate. And so we're having a really good discussion with them about how this is changing. And they've been part of that also. OK, I'll let you talk about this since you're the boss. <laughs> OK. Um, a lot of students ask about our faculty. We have four, 14 full-time faculty. This includes Dave Self. Um, and all of us, one thing I would suggest, um, if you are looking at uh, schools of journalism and mass communication, look at the faculty bios online. Um, we will find, if you look at the uh, Drake faculty, that we all have significant professional experience. And because of that, we have uh, strong connections with the professional community, not only in Des Moines, but also around the country. We I'm going to interrupt for just a second because I have to talk over you. This is really unique to Drake. There are very few programs where all the faculty have professional experience. And that trans translates to experience being brought in the classroom that you're going to find really hard to find anywhere else in the country. So I just want to put a plug in there. Since my background is live television directing and documentary work, all of our faculty bring experience into the classroom, and that's going to pay off for you. It, it really is. I mean, we're, we're hiring three new faculty next year, and um, just in that small sample, we've got um, a woman who is a former uh, former broadcast news person who has you know, done a lot of documentary film. We have someone else who has run her own business, her own uh, content marketing business. So we have a lot of, uh, of strength in, in that area. We have our own internship coordinator who works just with the School of Journalism and Mass Communication students to find them internships and jobs. And we fill this out by um, uh, having uh, adva taking advantage of the local professional community to have um, people who are actually out working in the field come in and maybe teach one class or, or so when we need them. Um, we don't really need to go into great detail about um, the, the curriculum and that there's a lot of information here, but I do know that frequently students are asking like, okay, what kind of classes am I going to be taking? Um, if you want to, and one thing we didn't uh, mention earlier when we were talking about the majors is that you know you're interested in communication, you're not quite sure what you want to major in, you can come in as an open journalism major and then spend, you know, within the first couple of years, uh, decide where you want to major. Or you can say, I'm going to come in as a magazine major, take some classes, decide, you know, work on the student newspaper or um, on the radio station and decide then, well, I want to change my major to something else. And you can certainly do that. And that's one of the advantages of having a four-year program for you to, to kind of find your way and figure out what your passion is. Um, hey, our, and yeah, go ahead. I'm going to interrupt you. Um, I was just going to say, one of the great things for all the majors, too, is in JMC 30, the first class you'd have with me next fall is we explore all those opportunities and we start to help you understand, you know, where your passion lies and what would you be interested in doing. So we cover that in the very first course that you're in.
we start to discuss the different opportunities in different majors. Sorry, I'll shut up. This was um, all students, uh, no matter what they major in, take a, a set of core classes that include uh, the classes that David's mentioned already, uh, the first semester, the mass media and a global society and the multimedia lab. We have a pre-professional workshop where you'll learn how to um, put together your resume and cover letter. Um, financial fundamentals, uh, workshop on that, reporting and writing, uh, digital strategies. I teach the, the media law and ethics class. We have an, an intro to visual communication. Um, so there's a core set of classes, and, but then once you decide um, where you want to specialize, then you will have specialized classes in magazines or digital media production or public relations, et cetera. And all this information, I would say that if you haven't looked at our SJMC website, our, our, uh, uh, please go on there. And there's a wealth of information about what's going on in our classes as well as the curriculum. I would, I would also, I would also say for those of you who are, you know, hopefully we're in your final group, and that's why you're on tonight. I really want to push orientation that takes place in the summer. A lot of people look at it and go, two days. How much can happen in two days in orientation? There's so much we go through, and you're going to meet your classmates. You're going to learn more about the sequence of courses. We're going to help you get registered, but it's starting making those connections because with you spending your next four years here that time period is crucial. So I really want to push orientation. I will be there. I'm excited about it. And it's a great opportunity for you to get connected and learn more about the curriculum. The uh, one thing that I that I didn't, don't think that I realized was so unique to Drake until I did some more experimentation is the really exciting, robust senior capstone projects that all of our majors do. Um, Public relations and advertising seniors do complete uh, PR and advertising campaigns for off-campus clients. Um, and uh, the, starting this year, the magazine, news, and digital media production students are collaborating on the, what David had talked about earlier, this really exciting multimedia website, um, Urban Plains. And so I encourage you to, to look that up and, and see what they're doing. They just launched it live for the first time about a week ago. And so there's a lot of really exciting stuff on there. It's driving them a little crazy, but it's exciting to see all the energy they have in the room for it. No, oh, it's it, it's really very cool. Check it out. Um, and then there's just the next couple of slides are just what we think of are kind of the high points of, of our program in many ways. Um, all of our majors, the student uh, work wins nat local and national awards. Uh, David mentioned a lot of the the magazine awards that our that our students win in every single I, I always tell prospective students that I'm incredibly proud that here we are this this uh, relatively small uh, journalism program in Des Moines Iowa and yet we wipe the floor with uh, um, uh, other schools <laughs> and all of our our, uh, our all of the the contests we enter the student work in I think that's just fabulous. And we're always I love how she says we, we wipe the floors. We love when we go to the high school journalism convention and we near, we're near Mizzou because we always win more awards than Mizzou does. And not that we're boastful, but we're here with you so we can talk one-on-one. -on -one. We're boastful. I know. I know. It's great. Um, we're an accredited school of journalism and mass communication. Most of the other programs that are accredited are at big state universities. So that's kind of a nice niche for us. We have the same type of professional uh, quality um, program is, is a much as much bigger schools. Um, one thing that we're very excited about is the, the growth in our public relations program. It's probably our fastest growing program. And last year it was um, it won a specialized accreditation it, uh, by the, the National Public Relations Society of America. And there's only about 36 programs in the entire world that are accredited uh, and we are one of them. So very proud of that. Uh, let me let me I'll, I'll talk. I know I'm just typing in there having fun. Um, um, here are some things that I've already talked to some of you about when you've been here. You get involved from day one around here. In fact, I'm going to push you this summer if you come here to start thinking about the connections you want to make inside of class and outside of class. There are opportunities in all of our organizations to get involved right away. You want to work on Drake Magazine, you can work on Drake Magazine your first year. You want to work on the student newspaper, you can do that. In fact, for admitted students, if you want to come here for relays and work on the video production for relays in April, 
we would love to have you come. Now, I can't promise good weather, but I can promise you an experience that will change your life forever and certainly see the deal for you coming to Drake. We have admitted students coming in and working on relays and doing the production with us. And it's an opportunity to see what our students do producing the biggest sports telecast for students in the country. So we want you to be engaged. It's critically important that you start to feel connected from day one. Also in the classroom, you're going to have those professionals that Kathleen was talking about. We've worked in the industry. I know I look old and I have no hair, but I continue to work. I'm in coordination right now with NBC, who's going to be coming in for the relays. I'm integrating with them in terms of what we do in the stadium during the event. We have that experience that we're going to bring in the classroom. And we're really excited, as Kathleen said, we have three amazing professors coming in to join us next year. So that's going to bring a different vibrancy to this community that I'm really excited about. Our relationships with the local and national professional communities, part of the reason we have 97% internship success rate is that the employers here in Iowa and in other parts of the country contact us looking for our students. Our students are best ambassadors. So if somebody gets a good internship or goes to work for ESPN, which we've had students go to work for them, then that connection is made and it provides opportunities for students coming up the ranks at Drake. So our relationships across, oh sure, change it on me, 100%. I'm You're sorry, jumping just, all over I'm here, okay. Are you just clicking away? <laughs> um, so the opportunities are, are really there. The other thing is, and I kind of compare us to Modern Family, if you like that program, we are, we are more like peers working together in this environment. We're always experimenting. We are not the be-all and end-all sage in the classroom. Um, one of our professors, Chris Snyder, had the Oculus 3 virtual reality system, and he had it in his office, and students were coming in and around. It was like, okay. He didn't know how it worked. He was just taking it in and trying it. We have a drone. We're trying all sorts of things. We did Google Glass. We're always experimenting here. And the number one thing our students say they like about the School of Journalism is working with the faculty. So we're hoping that you'll come here and join us. If you haven't been on campus, why not? You need to come and meet the faculty and students. If you just walk around the halls here with that blue folder from admissions, somebody's going to stop you and say, what do you want to know about what's going on here? I'll probably be a student because we have that kind of relationship with them. And that's something we're very proud of is we are energetic about working with our students. That's why we're here. I like what you type. Oh, you're typing more. Now you can't talk. OK, no, now I'll go to the next slide. My, OK. Oh, there I go. I was just trying to change the slide. OK. And, you know, again, the, the what uh, uh, the bottom line is that our students are successful and our graduates are successful. Um, one thing that I had said, I think earlier before we, when we were in, in, in blackout mode, was that um, we do have a lot of collection of materials um, that, that uh, for the last couple of years actually, where we keep track of where all of our students uh, are working six months out of graduation. And so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, if you haven't received that information from us uh, so far, um, let us know and we can send you a packet of information. All right, well. Okay, so that's what we wanted to cover. And before I go and eat pizza or something rewarding, this is your chance to stump the, um, to stump the people. We have three people who have the names beginning with E and we have Andy and Hannah in there also. And oh, Katie's here too, a good Irish gal who just celebrated St. Patrick's Day. Um, so this is an opportunity for you. What have we not talked about that you'd like to know about? No questions off limits. Yes, I came to Drake with hair, but it's all fallen out because of my own children. It has nothing to do with students. And Sarah's on there too. So this is the opportunity, folks. What would you like to know about the School of Journalism that you don't already know? Type away. Well, what can we tell you if you're in your final weeks of trying to decide where you're going to spend the next four years, what kind of information can we give you to help you make up your mind? That, that's a good point. As you can tell, we're a little bit excited about this place. Um, and we like telling the story. And we particularly like people coming and seeing what's going on here, because usually that's what convinces them that this is the place for them. Um, I would say one thing while people are typing. I see a bunch of you typing. That's great. Um, 
I think one of the advantages we have, oh, what are we going on a normal day in a class? Well, it depends on the professor. <laughs> I, let, me, let me talk about a little normal day. It depends on the class. We have both lab and lecture discussion classes. So let me compare the two. If you're in my class um, in JMC 30 in the fall, the very first thing that will probably happen is I will have news up on the channel and I try to choose different sources every day. Um, so I'll have the news on as students come in and we'll talk about some of the events occurring and how media is covering what goes on. Then we'll la launch into some kind of discussion about that topic of the day. So very often, Right now, we're in digital media, and we were celebrating the birthday of the World Wide Web, which is 26 years old today. I didn't make the students sing happy birthday, but I should have. And we're talking about how really the only digital media that's fully adopted at this point is email. Everything else is still in development. We were talking about the different types of social media that the students are using and how that's different generation to generation. So I start with points, and some of it is based in the book, but it's also based around current events. So we were talking about net neutrality quite a bit today and what the FCC is doing with that. So that's a lecture discussion course. Uh, I expect the students to come in engaged, ask questions, provide observations, and listen carefully to what we're covering about what's the changing world. A lab course, like the multimedia lab that you'll be in, uh, you'll be doing some video editing, you'll be doing audio editing, you'll be doing social media. It's a very small class, it's 18 students or less working on computers. Uh, you need to have a Mac when you, well, you don't need to have a Mac. We, we recommend Macs, but you're going to have to have Adobe Creative Cloud. And so in that multimedia lab, you'll be working on exercises with the professor, uh, taking different elements and putting them together. So that's much more hands-on. So the, 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 the lab courses tend to be working on different um, layout design uh, technology. The lecture discussion, Kathleen teaches uh, the law an ethics class, which is a lecture discussion. And so she, she'll she play, she chooses music. She may not tell you about this, but she chooses music for different things about ethic and legal issues. In fact, you you were did something today. You were talking to me about, what video did you have on in class today? The, um, Monica Lewinsky, the um, infamous um, Clinton, President Clinton intern, was uh, did a TED talk last week in which she, raise some issues involving a cyber bullying and things like that. So we talked about it in class today um, in the issue of media law and ethics and, and privacy. Um, I would point out that a lot of our classes, especially in the public relations uh, uh, major, but in a lot of other ones, they will take what they learn and they adopt an out of class client to do a project for. You know, if it's a our writing class, they'll do um, some kind of public relations writing for the Des Moines Zoo or something like that. So it's very applied. Um, I do know that somebody was asking about the magazine major and the curriculum of the major um, and also internships. Um, what I would say, not only about magazines, but in others, students will take the core classes, you know, kind of the introduction to professional writing, the introduction to, to um, to, to video and introduction to um, uh, design and, um, and visual communication, but then they will go off and specialize in the ma uh, magazine media uh, major, for example, they'll take a, a magazine freelance writing class um, and they will do have a magazine production class in which all the students come up with a concept for a magazine, they'll do uh, research on it and they will actually do a mock-up of, of an actual magazine. Um, editing, uh, many of our majors take uh, editing, and um, all of the, the journalism side of the house, the students are going to be also taking a kind of a video for journalist class as well, and as well as a web design class. Um, as far as the internships go, um, Meredith Corporation, which is this big international magazine and, and media company that's based in Des Moines, employs a lot of our students, not only the magazine students, but students from all majors are shooting videos for their website. They have a huge broadcast side of their business now too. So it's a great opportunity for our students. I would just pipe in there. Let me just throw in also one of the great opportunities on the magazine side that's rather unique to the magazines is they have an apprenticeships program at Meredith. So this is a comp competitive process that students interview for and generally in their senior year, though it can happen their junior year also, 
they go down and they work part-time, many times spending all day Friday down at Meredith Corporation. And they learn all levels of the corporation, plus they work in a division where they got incredible experience. That apprenticeship is a standard nationwide in terms of the opportunities. So having Meredith in our backyard and the fact we're in the Meredith building, that should tell you something about the relationship. Having Meredith in our backyard opens up opportunities for all majors. I would say not just magazine majors, but we're seeing a lot of our digital media majors, PR students have gone and interned with them, advertising, there are lots of opportunities. Having Meredith just is wonderful for us. So that's a great opportunity. Um, Compete for travel study scholarships. Um, what I would tell you is a lot of the financial aid ends up being used for the travel abroad programs. A lot of the students who do that use their financial aid and their scholarships for that also. That money can be used for that. Um, that's one of the biggest things that goes on that I know our students do. Maybe Kathleen's got more than that on that question. They do have the uh, International Programs Office does offer some scholarships for study abroad. Um, I do know that. In the School of Journalism, I've been using some of our own scholarship money to, to uh, for students to apply for January term uh, classes that are taught by our professors, you know, study abroad classes. Andy, I'm going to leap in on your question on sports journalism. Um, I keep waiting to want to announce this, this, but they haven't signed the deal yet, so I'm going to tell you something, but you can't post it on the web. Um, Drake is in negotiations through the Missouri Valley Conference to work with ESPN3. Uh, it's about a quarter million dollar investment that looks like it's going to take place hopefully next year. I keep waiting for them to sign. They haven't signed it yet, but we're very close to that agreement. And that's going to infuse an incredible amount of equipment that's available for us and students will be doing the primary production for all Drake basketball is what's going to take place first and then we're going to hopefully add on additional sports we'd like to see relays go for that also volleyball football and so on um, so this would hopefully occur next year I'm a little bit cautious because we haven't seen the signed agreement yet but this will open up all those um, programming will then go by internet uh, it's going to be a streaming opportunity through ESPN3 that would be incredibly exciting. Looking at the equipment and level of production that will be in, and those ties with ESPN would be huge. Already, our students are doing production uh, for every, basically every sporting event that takes place. They get paid to work for the athletic department. I helped set this up. Uh, my background was sports directing um, for many, many years before I came into academics. And I helped set this up for the university. So as an example, students do video for the scoreboards and streaming for football, volleyball, soccer, um, basketball. Um, we do relays, so the students do all the production on relays. They're going to add um, softball next year. We actually, we did that in a very simple way. We're hoping to, going to increase that production next year. So those opportunities for students to get involved with that. We also, on the student broadcasting side, our campus radio station uh, does radio broadcasts of all the basketball um all the football don't think they did volleyball this year but that's something we could expand into uh in addition we have students working for the sports information department at drake uh, so that's another opportunity or in the marketing or production areas we have part-time people working for athletics here in the city we have students working for the iowa cubs in the summer if you want to stay here in the summer actually it'll be starting up in april hope the weather gets better we had good weather and now it's crap today but um, we have students working for the Iowa Cubs doing video production. Uh, we've had students work out at Prairie Meadows. Uh, we've even had students work out at the um, NASCAR track. Um, so there are lots of opportunities for students to do sports production. Oh, I should also say the Iowa Energy and the Iowa Wild. So the opportunities for students to do sports production in Des Moines are very, very rich. Um, I also, as I mentioned, maybe, sorry, what were you going to say? Say a lot of the new students also like cover sports and work at the like the Des Moines Register um, or on uh, local TV stations as well. Yeah, we have a lot of, in fact, my son right now, and um, someday he'll graduate from Drake. Um, my son right now is working part time at the CBS affiliate here, and part of what he does is he shoots and edits sports highlights. So um, he very much enjoys sports, and that's in his blood. So the opportunities are rich and deep. And uh, the kind of hands-on, as, as I mentioned earlier, we've got somebody who's working for Chicago Bears right now that he started his sports production experience here. We had another student who worked at ESPN 
for two years and now he's working for a different sports network, which I'm not going to remember right now on the East Coast. He's at a startup network. So there are lots of opportunities to do sports production um, here at Drake, both written, video, audio, even on the promotion side. If you want to do promotions, athletics is very interested in having you look at that also. So that's a great question. Okay, time to stump the professor. Some of you have been very quiet. Sarah, do you want to throw a question in there? You can ask Kathleen where she got her hair done, something like that. Great. <laughs> oh, let's see. What is there? Okay, here we go. No, we, we've got one. Could you touch base on campus life at like a Drake? What are the students like, and how is the area surrounding the school? Great question. Um, Emma, where are you from? Just type in where you're from. I'm interested because I like to know that before I can compare it with something else. Las Vegas. Okay, we're just like Las Vegas. It's exactly the same. We've got a strip downtown. It never rains here. It never snows. No, we're just like Las Vegas. Um, okay, um, we don't have as many casinos. I think we only have two nearby, so that might be a stretch for you. Um, Des Moines is a really interesting city. For the people who've come here, I grew up in Chicago, and then I lived for years in San Antonio, Texas. Des Moines is blossoming right now. Um, Kathleen would probably tease me about this, but I'll throw it out there anyway. My wife and I work as ushers at the Civic Center of Des Moines because Drake pays me so poorly. No, it's not that. I really love the Broadway shows. So this year we had tremendous Broadway shows. And most of those shows have student rush tickets for like 20 or 25 bucks. So I, when I find out, I usually tell the students, okay, you need to go down because this is playing right now. As an example, coming at the end of April, we have Lion King which is selling incredibly well, considering it's the third time it came here. Um, so there's that opportunity. Um, there's a, a really rich music community within Des Moines. In fact, one of the, two of the strongest independent music people in Des Moines are graduates of Drake. Um, and they're very involved with that scene. We have the Des Moines Social Club, which has been set up downtown, which a lot of our students work at and grads work at. So there's a rich theater scene. There's a rich music scene. I'd also say, this is one of my main loves since I was talking about pizza before. The food in Des Moines has just gotten amazing in the last couple of years. The variety of food that's here and the availability of it. Uh, in very close to campus, we've got a great uh, independent Mexican restaurant. We've got two great barbecue restaurants. We have a Greek restaurant right across the street. So there's a lot of variety around campus. Um, I guess what I'd say about the environment around campus is just like any other city you're in, I think it's a really good idea after midnight to be walking with some other person and not going by yourself. We have our own security department here on campus, and I think they do a really good job of that. But there are parts off campus where I'd want to be with somebody else. But you know what? That's true in any city I go to. I travel a lot all over the world, and I feel very comfortable here. Another great opportunity for students is. Um, they get to ride the city buses for free with your ID. And a lot of students take advantage of that on the weekends to go downtown and sample the music, the theater, the food, the nightlife down in the city. So it's really, if you kind of look at the Chamber of Commerce site, or if you go out there and look at Des Moines, Des Moines wins awards all the time for being one of the really up and coming cities in terms of activities. I also would recommend for students, if you can, spend a summer in Des Moines because Summer is just a wonderful time around here. We've got one of the best minor league ballparks in the country with the Iowa Cubs. Uh, we have festivals that go on, it seems like, every weekend. We have the best state fair. I don't know what Nevada's state fair is like, but we have the best state fair in the country. So summer is a wonderful time to be around here and see what's going on. But there are lots of opportunities, lots of different things going on. It is a, this is hard coming from a kind of old fart, but it is a pretty hip city in terms of what goes on downtown in terms of the opportunities. I would say very that, yeah, sorry. Well, I, no, I was I would say that um, when I've done focus groups over the last couple of years with stu our current students about what they were looking for in college and what they found in Des Moines and at Drake, a lot of them, uh, especially those who are coming from out of town, will say things like, you know, I never thought I'd end up in Des Moines, Iowa for school, but they said like, you know, it's really cool here. And since I'm the person who has to track, you know, where all these students go, you know, six months after graduation, um, I would find that more and more students are actually choosing to remain in Des Moines. Not that you have to, because a lot of them do go back to Chicago or, you know, wherever they, they're from. 
But uh, this is Des Moines keeps winning all these awards as being a great place to be a young professional. And so um, we do have, it's a great place for students to find internships and, and jobs. Um, and as far as talking about the character of the students at Drake, um, I would say, and I, you, you know, you can disagree with me or not, David, but I think we have, we have pretty serious students. You know, it's not a cutthroat environment. Um, when I do this focus groups with students, they, they tell me, well, one thing that I find really nice is that they characterize the school of journalism as like a family. You know, it, there's, they find the, it's challenging, um, that their, their faculty challenge them, but at the same time, they're very supportive. And so, um, I had a, one of our alums who owns an advertising agency here in town a couple of years ago came in and did focus groups with our students. And um, he had also done focus groups with um, some students at, um, at, at a, a state university around here. And afterwards I said, okay, what, what kinds of things did students at Drake say that were different than students at other universities that you talked about and talked to? And he basically said, he said the students were much more into having a personal relationship with their faculty and that that was really important. He said, nobody said that the reason they came to Drake was to have fun. And on the one hand, it's not that they didn't have fun when they were here, but that there are students who, who came here with a mission, you know, and were very, um, very focused and very professionally oriented. So I think that was true. But he also said something that really resonated with me. He says, students here uh, more than any other place that he had talked students talked to students said that they really wanted to make a difference with their lives and um, I thought that was very was, was a very interesting comment for them to make we have students who are very engaged I mean very very engaged they're very busy um, and they really are taking the most um, advantage of their time here I would say the other word that I use is the students are passionate about what they're doing they really have a passion for journalism now that shouldn't scare you if you're not sure which area you want to go in, because we want to help you find that passion for what you really want to do. And we're going through advising right now with our uh, upper class students getting ready for registration. And it's really fun for me to sit down and talk to the students and say, okay, so what's your favorite course this semester and why? What's your least favorite? What's challenging you the most? And what's really interesting is it's very common for our students to say, I'm taking this course right now and it's challenging me beyond whatever I could believe, but I know I'm growing the most. And I love the professor because they're challenging me, but it's in a way that's helping me get to where I wanna go. And I'm like, that's what college should be. Um, we, we do it in a spirit of advancing where we're going. It's not lecture time, it's okay, let's get in and get our hands dirty and let's do this. Because to learn, you have to do things. You can't sit around and just observe it. Uh, journalism and mass communication, you have to participate. If you don't participate, you're never going to succeed. And here's just a bit of advice. When you go out and are looking to advance in the industry, wherever you go, you're not initially going to be given your star position. You're going to be given an entry-level position. And what you need to do is when you go out then, you continue to learn as you go out what the next person up, the next higher person up is doing and saying, that's where I want to go because someday they're going to move and then you're ready to move into it. So our students do a great job of that here. I agree. I would say that they're really engaged and they're really passionate about what they do at Drake. And that makes it wonderful to teach you. We're almost out of time. We only have two more minutes. So now's your last chance. If you have any questions that you're been dying to ask us. Some of you have been very quiet. <laughs> That's not something we do here very well. Is be quiet. Well, and it's um, and if you if uh, after this is over, you have questions, things that you that pop into your head, you can always you can always uh, contact us and you know, look on the Drake SGMC website, and all our contact information is on there. We'd be happy to. Oh, hey, okay, all right. Eat you to the punch. Thank you. <laughs> so you can reach out to us that way too if you want to. We we read email way too often. Part of what we do around here. I was even on Snapchat. If you look at here, I'll put you one more thing there. Thursday, great. Andy, we're glad you're gonna be here. 
Hopefully the weather's going to be better. It's supposed to get sunny. It rained today. Actually, on Friday, um, I'm going with a bus full of students up to Chicago. We're going to do some networking. We're going to the um, a tour of the United Center because some one of our students uh, has a relative involved with the Chicago Bulls. We're going to an advertising agency, and we're going to um, the NPR station, and we're going to have an alumni um, reception and visit with prospective students. So I'm going to be on a bus. Hey, Emma, Emma, before you sign off, I want to just check. Emma, am I meeting with you Saturday? Because I'm meeting with somebody on Saturday. If that's not you, send me an email and uh, we'll get together this Saturday because I'm meeting with some students. Good. Okay. I'm meeting with somebody at noon on Saturday. And if that hasn't occurred, drop me an email and we'll make sure we get together. I also put out there, we have a Snapchat and there's a really ugly picture of me on it right now. So if you want to go to Drake JMC on Snapchat, it's kind of fun. Yeah. And Katie just made my evening. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. We've loved talking to you all. We hope you have a good evening. Please use our emails to reach out. Um, we, we, if you haven't been here, we'd love you to come and visit because I think that's really going to help you understand. I'm glad that uh, Andy's going to be here and Emma's going to be here this week. We'd love to see the rest of you. We'll get you into class. We'll have you talk with faculty, with students. We want you to have the information you need to make a good decision. And we think we've got a Great place to show you on what's going on here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. It was fun. We'll be seeing you. Okay. Take care, everybody. Come to Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs>